I am joined today with Kyle Langham of the Affinity Foundation. We're going to talk about what the hell has been going on with the Internet Computer Protocol. Why is everything going off the charts? Kyle, thank you so much for joining me. It's a pleasure having you on, as always, my friend. So I'm going to ask you the question, what the hell is going on? The cycle burn rate is like almost tripling, right, in a matter of days. We have the the uh, transactions that are kind of skyrocketing, and I'll, and I'll zoom in on this one here. You can see these are ICP transactions over the last seven days, and you can see this thing has been up and to the right. We go to something like a metric like the total burned, and this thing has just gone absolutely parabolic. You're the data and analytics guy. What is going on, uh, and why is this happening? Yeah, appreciate uh, appreciate you guys having me on again. I apologize, my voice uh, getting over a cold. Uh, I so great. if it sounds, oh, I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, no. So uh, there's a couple things. First of all, um, there's there's one thing, uh, one big thing, but then there's also a trend kind of under undercutting it. Uh, for the last couple of months, throughout the whole summer, the cycle burn rate, which is basically the um, the activity going on on the network, it's it's almost analogous to like revenue for AWS or, you know, that kind of a metric, uh, the cycle burn rates almost doubled uh, is throughout the summer. And it really just shows like when you look at all the different metrics, it's existing apps on the internet computer, um, just growing in their user bases, uh, finally, you know, really getting that adoption, uh, re you know, reaching the, the um, hockey stick por portion of their adoption curve as well as new apps building uh, very, very novel uh, applications on the internet computer. Uh, we saw a couple of months ago, Tap Protocol, which is a, a big name within Bitcoin. They released a, a, um, a canister on the uh, internet computer that allowed native uh, Bitcoin swaps and liquidity pools directly on the mainnet, which is kind of a cool innovation. And we've seen a few of those pop up. But then over, uh, let's say last Thursday, I think it was, a new project launched and just absolutely torched every record we've ever seen on the internet computer. It's this project called Bob.fun. Um, and it's essentially building, um, they, they, they build it as Bitcoin uh, on the internet computer with Doge utility is, is, is it, and we can, we can dive deep into what those actually, what that actually means. Interesting. Um, yeah. Can we maybe dive a little deeper into, into kind of what that means and um, the, the, maybe the longer lasting effects on that? Yeah, so so um, essentially, popped up on uh, they launched what? So anyone who has ICP tokens can go onto Bob up fund and launch a miner, and a miner works very much similar like a Bitcoin miner would work, where it does a proof of work consensus, and the first person, you know, the first miner that solves the problem gets the block reward for um, for that, and then you know the block reward is in uh, Bob tokens, B O B, which stands for B uh, blockchain on blockchain because it's Bitcoin on uh, ICP, so they called it blockchain on blockchain. Mm. So um, so essentially what happened now is uh, the the project just really tapped into some like underlying demand that people had for like wanting to participate in that like early Bitcoin miner days. Um, and so, you know, there's, I think there's 12,000 different miners that have popped up in the last five days. Um, people are completely maxing out the amount of like power consumption for their miners trying to mine as much Bob as possible before, you know, it has a, um, you know, the, the deflationary uh, token emission schedule that Bitcoin has. And so people are kind of treating it like early days and trying to get as many blocks as possible early on. Um, and that's just resulted in this hockey stick cycle growth. Um, and you can actually see it in the total supply of ICP has gone very deflationary over the last couple of days. Um, and so it's just, it's a lot of fun, right? And I think, you can see within the community a couple different approaches. Some people think this is, uh, you know, hey, the, the truest, fairest launch of a token ever. Anyone can participate. It's cyber resistant. Um, so that's one one narrative you're seeing. Other people think it's just a, a toy, a pet rock. Uh, they're not interested in ICP being used in that way. That's fine. That's their, their prerogative. And then there's other people probably more like the... Um, engineers and and uh and such they're really interested in this as a stress test for icp um, uh, we've constantly been saying icp is extremely scalable it's extremely scalable and here's so, kyle not to cut you off i'm so happy you brought that up because i was going to say we've seen other blockchains i'm not going to name them um but when they see an influx of users an influx of transactions the network either struggles or it out, outright goes down 
How has the internet computer on a protocol level, how has it performed? Is it everything you expected? Uh, are there any issues you guys are seeing or is this thing like, is that all you got? Uh, so, uh, as in terms of a stress test, uh, we, it hasn't, the network hasn't been stressed yet. Uh, there was, um, early in the first day or two, um, there was an architecture problem and, um, Bob.fun that found out that it could max out a specific aspect of a subnet. Um, the developers there just went back, you know, uh, re, re, reconstituted their, their, um, their architecture. And now you're seeing that, you know, again, we've 20 X the network activity, um, the, and that, and, and, and that doesn't even like when you think about ICP as subnets, that's 20 xing the network activity, but only doing it on one subnet. Yeah. Uh, and so it just really shows the scalability of the subnets. Um, and I think we could still, I, it, I, I don't, we haven't found where it's reached a breaking point yet. So, yeah, like, you know, in its current state, um, if there were, let's say, 10 or 20 Bob dot fund style or, or level of activity and transactions, would the internet computer have any issue handling that kind of load? No, I mean, we have 34 subnets, uh, so you could you could easily fit a bob.fun on each subnet, so that would be 34 of them. I would like to see, hey, can we fit two bob.funs on a single subnet? Oh. And in addition, like, subnets are, we have a pool of like a thousand nodes that are waiting to come online anyways. And so even if we did need to roll out new subnets, it would be pretty trivial to do so. Ready to go, okay. Uh, amazing. Kyle, I want to share a uh, post here on X from you. Um, you said, in, it's September 9th, not even nine full days into September, and it's already been a crazy huge month for the Internet Computer Protocol. Here are five things that happened. We already discussed this. Bob.fun. Over 8,000 miners have launched and continue to grow. Uh, you talked about Bob is not the only app scorching cycles. General network activity, excluding Bob, is up 2x since May, driven by new apps deploying on ICP and existing apps gaining more traction. Talked about chain fusion apps are also doing well. Uh, Bridge 23 launched a phenomenal use case of ICP technology, releasing iChess. It features on-chain verification of its LLM uh, large language model offering users, offering users a unique transparency into its move generation. You also number four talked about a new uh, a new Dex, right? Kong swap. So um, which of these two? And if you want to, you know, maybe dive into both of them. But um, what are you kind of seeing from Kong dot or Kong swap and and maybe iChess and and uh, how, you know how that's affecting ICP? Yeah. So I mean, Kong swap um, I think has the potential to be massive. I've I've personally use the beta version. Uh, it's um, essentially, if you've thought of like the multi-chain decks that everyone has always wanted, um, but never really got it, I think that that's the market that they're trying to get to. They're using the chain, fu chain fusion technology of ICP to its fullest. Um, and I do know, I've talked with their developer team before, they're, they're planning on just decentralizing the entire thing, turning the entire decks over to a DAO. Um, so you can think of like Uniswap, but maybe the next version of, um, uh, you, you know, maybe like the, the 2024 version of Uniswap. Um, which will be, I think, could be pretty massive. Um, the iChess, I haven't experienced, I haven't tried that out myself. I just love the fact that they're using on-chain. This is a, 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 um, a clear use case that I think we're starting to see a lot more people dive into, which is uh, LLMs fully on-chain for the purpose of being able to verify um, the outputs coming out of the LLM. Uh, so in this case, you could actually verify that the, um, that the, the, AI that you're competing against, you can go back and check that it's doing um, like how it's actually uh, doing its moves. Um, and then I think there was even a fifth one about, um, was there a fifth one if not? Yeah. Oh yeah, 64 bit environment. And that's actually, I, I excluded, um, uh, there's a project that has a, a story LLM that's launched on chain. You can basically start a story and it'll finish the story about the, you know, it's always related to the internet computer, but it'll finish the story for you. Really, I mean, just, and this has all happened like in the last like seven days, eight days, really cool use cases of people leveraging the ICP technology. You know, Kyle, and ju just to kind of play devil's advocate here, someone might be saying, well, cool, you know, you have a, uh, a chess, a chess thing, right? LLM running on it. It's, that's not really big, right? Like how many people really play chess? But can you maybe go a little further as far as why it's so important for things like this to happen on the network and what what implications and ramifications it can have moving forward? 
Yeah, I mean, I'm I don't want to be in the position where I'm saying like this is exactly what this technology should be used for, right? So you say like, oh, chess, big deal. Um, it maybe is a big deal for a specific community or specific market. Um, instead, what it is is it's it's highlighting these use cases as like the next revolution on the internet or like the next innovation um, cycle. So you're building things on the internet computer that can't be built on the web two tech stacks, and I think that really kind of gets to like this point of like. Blockchain technology has been around for 12 years. And other than, you know, I think we're, it's still looking for that product market fit. You could definitely say as a financial institute or instrument, um, like Bitcoin specifically has re reached product market fit as a alternative to the traditional finance system. But we're still looking for like, okay, on the software side, what is, mm -hmm. what is the product market fit here? And I think what you're seeing with these projects are people who are really pushing the boundaries on innovation to really try to find unique products and then go back and 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 um and find the consumers that are interested in them. Yeah. Um. Just to be clear, I love playing chess. I used to play chess with my dad all the time. He would beat me, but he would be like, "Son, this is a lesson for you." I'm like, "Thanks, Dad. Keep beating me." <laughs> uh, Kyle, and, then, gonna... and then you say, "Did you let me? You you know, I've just been letting you win all these years." Yeah, I know, right? Yeah, I try to do that with my kid, but he's like, "What's chess?" I'm like, "Oh, okay." Uh. Anyways, uh, Kyle, I'm gonna ask you the same question I ask you every time. We do a video together. Um, any any alpha you can give the ICP community? Um, any uh, big announcements? Maybe people can expect going into the end of the year. Or... <laughs> There's a lot going on. Um, I'm hearing a lot of rumblings of people basically replicating Bob Dot Fun, but doing it for Bitcoin, doing it for Ethereum, doing it for Solana. Um, we're seeing a lot of interest on the Bitcoin side of things. I think last time we talked about this, um, a lot of Bitcoin infrastructure being built on the internet computer right now. Um, so keep your eyes open for that, but more or less, like, uh, I mean, I'll just say when we did, um, we definitely did projections on when ICP would become deflationary, uh, our projections showed like 2027 is what we were thinking for the optimistic case, um, with the launch of Bob.fund we're deflationary today. Uh, and so it's one of these things like, okay, maybe Bob.fund is temporary, maybe it lasts forever and, and. And that's just it. But it has unlocked this like thinking of like, oh, actually, ICP has this like heavy, heavy, heavy compute layer, right? Like actually running a proof of work on chain. Yeah. What what other products can you build with that type of a um, system? And I I'm, I know there's a lot of chatter in the background of like, wait a second, they they've tapped into something here, and I could imagine there's going to be a lot of new products that maybe just do little little variations or little um, uh, uh, tweaks on it. So. I think uh, I think everyone eventually will wake up to what Definity has done and is continuing to do. Uh, the technology that is built and is continuing to be built. Uh, it's hard pressed to find any other project or company or even a group of companies that are trying to do something similar at the efficiency level that that ICP is running at. Um, I know I said last thing, but but you touched on the token becoming deflationary. Why is that important or or what what is the effect of that uh, for maybe the average person watching? I, I, obviously, we know token price, you know, the less tokens and if the people are using it, the price goes up. But, but why else? Maybe any any other reason it could be important? I think the easiest way to, to think about it is um, think back to like the days of Uber. Uh, I mean, they spent like six or eight years where they were just shedding, you know, they had negative profit. Right. Zero, yeah, um, exactly. And then once profit came, it came. Um, and and it's that kind of a mindset of like, um, there's there's a race against time where uh, you have a new product like ICP and you want to basically show that, yes, it is scalable. Yes, there is demand, um, you know, for it to grow. And yes, the, uh, the, the economic model works to where it can now actually escape, reach some sort of escape velocity where it's self-sustainable. And I think, you know, so that that reaching that deflationary mode is part of that validating that, yes, this is a uh, um, an economic model that works. And yes, this system is scalable, um, you know, to 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 get to that point. I'm so happy you brought up Uber. A lot of people, uh, maybe they either forgot or don't know, but I think it might have even been longer, Kyle. I think it might have been closer to 10 years where they were mm -hmm. negative. And they were still getting billions of dollars of investments from venture capital because they understood the long-term horizon of what this company was doing, the massive feat they were they were trying to accomplish and completely revolutionizing transportation, right? You and then in 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 parallel, you're talking about a project like ICP 
that is literally trying to revolutionize what is being done on chain, moving everything from web two to web three, 100% on chain, front end and back end. And so uh, for the people watching, um, if you think that's an easy feat, uh, I, you know, I, I, I could tell you five stories about why it shouldn't be, but uh, these things take time. Uh, and with people like you, Kyle, and the rest of your team working super hard. And again, I, I know I uh, we talked about this uh, post air, but or pre air, but I literally text you 20 minutes before I went live, and you were more than happy to join me. And I think that says a lot about you guys, your culture, there, at Affinity. Uh, and so we appreciate you, Kyle, as always. Thank you so much, and uh, we'll see you next time. I think I think it says more about the show you guys run. You run a fun show to be on, and I look forward to these talks. So we appreciate it, man. I hope you feel better as well. Yeah. Oh, I appreciate it. Take care. All right. Thanks, guys.